Hey, you're watching Vinyl 4 Miles, your best resource for music, audio gear, and vinyl reviews. Today we're talking about angel horns, turntables, and how to fix some very common issues that I discovered. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Michael. This is Vinyl 4 Miles. What we do here is audio, gear, music, gear, vinyl, pretty much anything having to do with music or my hobbies. I'm on top of it. I'm going to bring you content. If that's something you're into, go ahead and give me a subscribe, hit the bell notification while you're at it so you get notified when I publish new content. Today we're looking at Angel's Horn. If you guys aren't familiar, Angel's Horn has been popping up all over Amazon. They're on Wayfair. They're pretty much all over the place. It's an entry level turntable. They're extremely cheap when it comes to how much they cost. They look very nice and they have lots of cool features that you would expect to see on items like Project or Audio Technica, but you can get these easily under $200 in various spots. Angel's Horn reached out to me and sent me a turntable for evaluation. So I was originally going to do a full review of this, give my recommendation. However, I ran into some problems, primarily with the tone arm. So this tone arm is compromised of aluminum which is the barrel here, uh, but the rest of it is plastic and it's using a lot of different screws in there and the mechanism itself is very stiff. Uh, it's probably twice as stiff as other turntables I have in my house um, that are at this entry level here. The key with a tone arm is it should bounce freely. You should barely tap that tone arm and that should do a lot. The problem I ran into with this turntable was I could not balance the tone arm properly because it wouldn't sit flat. And I can demonstrate what I mean here. So there's a few mechanisms going on. You have your tone arm lift. The problem with this tone arm lift is it doesn't go down enough. Just keep that in mind. Your tone arm lift doesn't really go down far enough to balance this tone arm. You can get around that though. The other problem was with the balance and the weight in the back, if you were to pull the weight all the way back to the first position it can even click in here, you would expect this tone arm to go all the way up. Any other turntable I've ever used your tone arm should be flying up right now, but it always goes down or sticks where you put it. So I could push it down and it's staying down. It should be pushing up like this. Now notice when I pushed it up, if I tap down on it, it's stuck because it's a very sticky mechanism. So this is the problem that I ran into was balancing the tone arm. And the result of this is you can't get an accurate reading. You think you're putting on 3.5 grams, but you're not and the tone arm ends up not going down straight and scratching your record. So I found a couple workarounds. I reached out to Angel's Horn. I let them know, hey, I'm probably not gonna make a video on this turntable because I can't balance your tone arm. I've been at it for a couple hours now. I'm not having any luck. I saw some other YouTube reviewers had the same problem. They couldn't get the tone arm to drop straight. After talking with them, they're really nice, by the way, over email. Um, they weren't pushy or anything like that. They're like, hey, if you don't wanna post a review, don't do it. But if you wanna post a helpful video, teaching people how to fix it, if they have the same issue, why don't you do that? So that's what I'm doing, just trying to be helpful. Uh, their customer service was pretty nice. So if you guys do have one of these Angel's Horn turntables and it's not balancing, just reach out to customer service. They probably will help you get your replacement or go over what I'm about to show you. So on this tone arm here, there is a mechanism that is the balancing mechanism basically. And there's three screws. You have one screw up top here. It's all flathead screws too. One screw up top, then you have two screws on each side. So the first thing that I did was I loosened these screws. So I'm loosening the top screw, about two turns. Loosening the side screw. And then you're gonna have to take it and put it over the platter to reach the back and then loosen up the third screw here. All right. So now that those screws are loosened, watch. The tone arm flies right up. Look at that. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to hang like that. So now that we have those screws loosened and the tone arm is freely moving around like it should, that's great. No matter how hard I push down here, it's not gonna stay down. It's gonna fly back up. We're gonna want to go ahead and balance it and get it to where it's staying straight. Uh, hold the back of the tone arm weight and then you're gonna turn your dial to zero. And I really do not like this weight because it only has about two grams on it. So you have to twist it multiple times and you kind of lose track of where you're at. So my recommendation is get yourself one of these scales. Oops, 
What this scale does is it measures the tracking force that you're putting on your tone arm. Uh, very easy to use, and this will give you an accurate representation of exactly how much force is being put on your records. So now that I have it balanced out, I put the zero on here, I'm gonna go ahead and add 3.5 grams, that's what they recommend. That sounds a little bit heavy, it's not gonna damage your records, trust me. You need a lot more force than 3.5 grams to damage your records. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on two grams, which is the max on here. So now I'm back to zero, that means I'm at two, I'm gonna go ahead and put 1.5 more. 1.5, all right. So now if I let go of the tone arm, it's bouncing down, that's good. It's somewhat balanced. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my scale here. It comes with a five gram weight, so the first thing I do is I stick it onto the platter itself. I put the weight on. It should read five grams. It is reading five grams, so I know for sure the scale is correct. And what I'm gonna do now is you drop the tone arm directly on that little black dot. And I'm at 3.05 grams. It should be 3.5. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up, add a little more weight to this. Now I'm at about 3.45. I'm okay with that. You can have a little bit of wiggle room on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the tone arm back. And it should be putting down the correct tracking force now. So when you use the tone arm lift and you let the arm down, it should go straight down and land directly on your record. So the biggest issue here is just this whole balancing mechanism is very hard to use. So what I'm doing now is I put my anti-skating calibration disc on here just to test this out before I actually put a record on to make sure that it's dropping down straight and that's not pulling to the left or to the right. This turntable uses one of those really finicky fishing line weights to do the anti-skating settings. I absolutely hate these things. Um, I'm not a huge fan. It says to put it on the third notch, that's where I'm at, is on the third notch, so ideally with my tracking force I just put on there, the anti-skating settings I put on here, it should balance somewhat in the middle. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And, and what this should do is it should float in the middle and not really pull to the left or pull to the right, so let's see. There's a little bit of flutter on there, but that's totally fine. I would say for an entry level turntable, this is acceptable, and there we go. So now that I've done all of that, the turntable is in working order. Remember, loosen the screws up here if you have one that's very sticky or it's not balancing correctly. Don't take the dial and the weight on here at face value, it's not correct. I would check it with the scale. These things are cheap, I think this cost me like $6.99 on Amazon. Once you have all that done, everything's balanced, you check your calibration, it's working, I will give this a thumbs up to use. Um, so my opinion on the turntable, it looks beautiful. Uh, the veneer on here looks great, this walnut veneer. Just overall, their branding super cool. I mean, basically this is a super cheap version of a project. They're, used, they're cutting corners here and there. There's some pretty cheap components used on here, a lot of plastic. So when it comes to entry level turntables at this price point, there's a lot of other stuff out there I'd probably recommend over this. But if you do have an angel's horn, turntable. Don't throw it away. Here's how you fix it. Here's how you balance it. It's a completely acceptable turntable once you correct the tone arm balancing issues. So two angels horn. My recommendations for you guys, first off, get a new mechanism here or lube it up or loosen the screws before you send it to your customers because it's just virtually impossible to balance this thing. Get a heavier weight. Get a weight that can go up to four grams. That way we're not having to use the 1.5 spin and keep going and trying to guess where the hell 3.5 grams is, get a heavier weight on the back. Um, when it comes to the anti-skating fish line, it broke the first time I used it. Um, so I actually am using thread here, <laughs> um, sewing thread because it's a little stronger and it, it seemed to stick better for me. Uh, and also like I would like to see a wider platter. This platter is not very wide so your record's gonna stick off about half an inch, uh, which I don't, I'm not really a huge fan of. But aside from that, it's it's still a very attractive looking turntable. They do have an aluminum tone arm on here. It does come with a name brand Audio-Technica cartridge. So, I mean, overall, there's a lot of cool things going on with this, but I wouldn't necessarily have this as my top pick for an entry-level turntable. Um, I like to have turntables that work right out of the box, need minimal adjustments, and instructions are crystal clear. So, there it is. That's how you can correct the issues with the Angel's Horn turntable. Again, their customer service, I do give their customer service two thumbs up. They're very responsive. They were very nice. 
They even offered to send me another turntable and I told them don't worry about it. I'll just show you how to fix this one and show your customers how to fix this one. So hopefully that helps. If you guys do enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and check out some of my other turntable reviews up here. Uh, once again, I'm Michael, this is Vinyl for Miles. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.